Hello friends, what would you do if your partner of over 50 years no longer recognizes you? For several years, I have watched myself turn into a stranger towards my wife, Melissa, and this is the heartbreaking story of how my beautiful Melissa became a shadow of her old self. I have watched her fall deeper into herself, and it hurts me to always realize that I can't do anything to help her. I am sitting at the edge of my bed, and my alarm rings out, but despite its loud and chilling tone, I allow it to ring for as long as it wants. I am thinking of the earlier days with my wife, and how it was the greatest days I ever lived. Several decades ago, we got married in a small ceremony with our family and friends, and it was the beginning of a wonderful life for both of us. I had met her in a small pub right outside my town, while I was out with my friends. As soon as my eyes landed on her, I couldn't help but stare. She was the most beautiful woman I had seen, and everything around her seemed to slow down when she smiled. I told my friends, Jake and Peter, that I had found the woman I was going to marry, but they laughed in my face. There was no way this woman was going to be my wife, my friend said. Not only had I never seen this woman before, but I had no idea if she was married to somebody else. I promised myself that I was going to make her my wife, and I decided to speak with her on that night. She told me her name was Melissa, and she was in town to see her old friends. We talked about everything we had done before meeting each other. And when she finally had to leave, I was pretty sure I had found the woman of my dreams. It happened so naturally with Melissa, and she admitted to feeling the same way. Just a year after meeting each other, we tied the knot and it was the start of the rest of our lives. But as the years went by, we realized that marriage wasn't entirely a bed of roses. After some time of marriage, Melissa and I decided that it was time for us to have kids of our own. We both dreamed of having a large family. Unfortunately, this turned out to be the most difficult time of our lives because no matter what we tried, we couldn't conceive a child. We visited every specialist in town and got recommendations from family and friends. But everything ended with the same response, you and your wife are totally fine, but we will keep checking. One year of trying quickly became two, and then three, and it seemed like we were never going to have that large family we wanted. But Melissa never thought of giving up for a second. Every time she would nudge me on, asking that we try one more specialist. I had no idea what to do. I knew how difficult this was on her, and I knew how much she wanted us to have children. So we explored every option we had to the point that it took a heavy hit on our finances. But we weren't going to give up. This was what we wanted and we were going to have it. Our bond became stronger and this challenge even helped us become a better couple. After waiting for five years, Melissa finally conceived a child. We couldn't believe our luck, and we promised to do everything within our power to keep this child safe and alive. And we did. Nine months later, Melissa delivered our first child and we named him Adem, after his grandfather. A man who survived the horrors of war yet was the best father anyone could ask for. But our joy quickly turned into sorrow when the doctors came in to announce a tragic news. Adem was suffering from a condition that could potentially end his life if urgent medical care wasn't given. Melissa immediately burst into tears. How could she live with herself? She asked me. She had wanted a baby for a long time, and now she had to lose him. I tried to assure her that this wasn't the end of the road for little Adem, but she still couldn't stop crying. An emergency surgery had to be done on our baby's heart. And just before he was taken into the theater, the doctor told me to keep my mind open because this little boy might never return alive. But Adem was a strong boy, just like his grandfather and he fought through the pain to survive. The doctor came back out with a smile on his face, and he told us that not only was the surgery a success, but Adem was going to grow up without any issues in future. Melissa broke into tears of joy, and I tightly held her hands as she cried. We had waited for so long for it to happen, so long to be parents and here it was, the most beautiful feeling in the world. Having a dem was the greatest achievement for us as parents, and we did all we could to raise him into a fine young man. After five years of being parents to this wonderful boy, Melissa wanted us to try again for another baby. I didn't think it was a good idea because I wasn't sure she could handle childbirth a second time. But she was determined to have another baby against all odds, and I was willing to support her as long as I could. After six months of trying, we finally conceived another child, and upon her arrival, we named her Sarah. It was a perfect moment for us as a family. At some point in our lives, it was just me and Melissa. And then Adem came into the picture, before Sarah also arrived a few years later. We had that family we always wanted, but nothing prepared us for what was coming next. It's always a wonderful experience to watch your children grow, but nothing ever prepared me and Melissa for the loneliness that came with Adem and Sarah moving out of the house. They had grown into adults, and they needed to start their own lives. But it was still very difficult to let them go. This took a heavy toll on Melissa who always had a soft heart, and she would call Adem and Sarah at every chance she got. In fact, I watched her cry herself to sleep on certain nights because of how lonely she felt as a mother. But she knew that I was always there to support her, and she also did everything she could to make me feel better. 
Fortunately, this was another chance for us to explore our relationship and improve our marriage. Adem and Sarah, as we called them, also thought it was a great time to come home and spend a few days with us. As soon as Melissa saw her children at the door, she hugged them as hard as she could and wouldn't let go of them. It was refreshing to see Melissa happy again, but I had no idea this was the end of the beginning. It was time for dinner, and the entire family sat at the dinner table. Then Melissa called out to our son. However, instead of saying his name right, she mentioned Paul. I and Adem exchanged glances. Who was she talking about? Her son then looked her in the eyes and asked why she called him Paul, but she had no idea that she just called him something else. I was worried. It seemed like something was different with her. One day, I decided to ask her if she could remember the first time we took a trip out of the country together. It was one of the most memorable moments of our life, and I knew there was no way in the world she could forget. But despite everything I said about the trip, my wife, Melissa, couldn't remember anything. To make matters worse, she became confused pretty easily and would repeat questions even after I answered. I was worried that something terrible was about to happen to my wife, so I decided to take her to the hospital for immediate tests. But to my surprise, the test showed that she was fine, but could be at the risk of Alzheimer's disease due to the symptoms I had noticed. And this was the beginning of a new part of our lives. I watched as Melissa slowly became a shadow of her old self. She began to forget some of our most important memories, and she could barely remember the names of her grandchildren. I watched as she struggled to remember her own children, often calling Adem by a different name, and she had no idea who Sarah was. And to make matters worse, she couldn't remember how Adem had been born even though she always told this story to everyone who was willing to listen. After several months, I knew I had lost Melissa to a dangerous and awful disease. Even though I could talk to her, there wasn't much she could do anymore. She was confused half the time and slept for an incredibly long period of time. But I wasn't going to leave because my wife isn't who she used to be. In fact, I saw this as an even more important reason to stick around. However, I was worried about what would happen when she stopped recognizing me. The doctors already said it was inevitable, suggesting it was only a matter of time before she forgets about her husband. I was scared, and I silently prayed every day that this should never happen. Unfortunately, the doctors turned out to be right, and I soon became a stranger to my wife of several decades. I constantly tried all I could to make her remember me or what we shared, and I even tried doing a silly dance to see if it would jolt her memory, but nothing helped. She no longer knew who I was to the point that she once asked me why I was in her house. Melissa had now reached a point where she was too confused to do anything on her own. And even though I was giving her all the care she needed, I knew it was time to let her go to a nursing home. On the day she had to leave, I felt like a part of myself was no longer mine. It almost felt like someone was pulling my heart out of my body, and there was nothing I could do about it. This was enough to make me think about walking away. Some people might choose to find somebody else to spend their old age with, while some would give up. But not me. I began thinking of what I could do to make her remember me again, even if it was only for a brief moment. For as long as I can remember, Melissa always loved eating the meals I prepared. Every single time I made a meal, she would say a gentle thank you before telling me how great the food was. Then right after she finished, she would joke about how I could have made it as a chef. And then I thought about it. Why not prepare breakfast for her every day? It was the least I could do ever since she moved into the nursing home. So, every morning by 5 a. M. My alarm rings out. I sit at the edge of my bed for a few seconds, and I step out to the kitchen to start preparing breakfast for myself and my wife. It didn't matter that I was old. Every time I started cooking, my bones seemed to jump with excitement. It was an act of love to the woman that mattered the most to me, and my body naturally understood that. Every day, I would visit my wife with her breakfast and watch her eat, but the effect of the disease worsened each day, and she would sometimes not allow me in or even speak to me. I kept reassuring myself that even though the disease had stolen her memories, it had not stolen the love I had for her. In fact, this experience only made me love her more. I made a promise to love her through thick and thin, and I'm sure this falls right in that category. I immediately became a local celebrity in the nursing home, and everyone soon became really nice to me. It was obvious that they all wanted to know why I kept bringing breakfast to a woman who didn't even recognize me. The years go by, and I reach the ripe age of 80, but despite how weak I had grown, I didn't stop making breakfast for my wife. I have been doing this for the last five years, but a part of me still believes that she will remember me someday. I only hope it's never too late when she does. After years of being curious, a nurse asked me a question that I had been too scared to think about. Would my wife miss me or even notice if I didn't bring her breakfast one day? I didn't know how to answer the question. My wife probably had no idea I brought her breakfast every day, so what difference would one day make? In response, I said to the nurse, what if the next day I bring breakfast is the day she remembers me? Do you think I made the right decision by sticking around? What would you do if you were in my shoes? I'd like to hear from you. 